Hi, everybody. Can you guys hear me okay? All right. <laughs> um, well, I hope you guys are having a good time here. And today we're going to be talking about our customer data platform and how it integrates with Marketing Cloud, specifically regarding how data, uh, data definitions and data separation of business units is honored between the platforms. So we're going to talk a little bit about CDP and how it works, how it harmonizes data together, and then some new features we've recently released, which we call BU Awareness. So we're going to start with our just a forward-looking statement. We are going to be talking about roadmap today and some of the feature enhancements that we're going to be doing. And I'd be happy to stay after if anybody has any questions about the customer data platform, CDP, or marketing cloud business units. Um, today we're going to cover uh, what is the customer data platform. Many of you have probably heard this term, researched what customer data platforms are. So I'll kind of describe what the Salesforce customer data platform is, uh, what are some of its primary functions and capabilities. And we'll talk about the problem we're addressing with this business unit awareness capability between the two platforms. Um, we'll talk about how you implement business unit awareness, the data models around that, and the data flow across both the systems, how to set it up, and some considerations based on how your particular organization is using CDP and using Marketing Cloud. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about Roadmap. So let's start with the customer data platform. Um, so what is it? Uh, so it is a first party trusted data asset where you can harmonize all your data across all your systems. It has several different methods for bringing data into the system. For many of the assets in the Salesforce ecosystem, it has pre-built connectors that automatically map into a common data model called the cloud information model. That's kind of the foundational data model of CDP. Um, it unifies data using match rules based on different types of identity resolution. So it has fuzzy match and direct match. And depending on your needs and your use cases, you can define how that unified identity actually gets generated across your different source systems. It can be activated to any platform. So once that data is unified, you can create segments. You can create uh, calculated insights and metrics and then activate it either to an S3 bucket, marketing cloud, or uh, other Salesforce assets like commerce. You can also use that rich data and those identity graphs to power AI. So think about all the different aspects or, or different shards of identity that you have across your systems. This really brings them together and creates a single graph for you to look at that customer across all these systems. Um, and this really allows our customers to adapt to the cookie list future. Um, when you're no longer able to track your customers uh, from an anonymous perspective, you want to make sure you have everything about them in one place so you can take advantage of all that rich information. So when you think about the customer data platform, there's a lot of different ways data is coming into the system. All of the different source systems that actually bring in data into CDP have their own definition of data segmentation, data segregation, and data access because they're all used for different purposes. So once data gets into CDP, it's actually currently, in today's state, a single harmonized environment. So all the data in CDP and all the source system get matched together into single unified profiles. Um, now, when you start to activate that data back to other activation platforms or back to the source systems, there are some uh, dissonance between the way the data was harmonized in CDP and what exact data is allowed to go back to any individual activation platform. Those platforms have their own definition of how data should be segregated and separated. So business unit awareness is specifically related to the integration between marketing cloud and CDP. And what it does is it allows you to define a very clear relationship between a contact identity and marketing cloud and a unified profile in CDP and ensures that only contacts that belong to that business unit get activated. Um, and I think once you harmonize the data, it makes it very difficult to disaggregate that data during activation. You can still use the rich data to segment, but when the activation actually happens, only the relevant contacts are activated. And we'll show you kind of how that works, how the business model, or how the identity model works. This is a very simplistic view of kind of how the data model in CDP works. 
So you can see at the top, there is a unified individual profile. This is the harmonized, reconciled version of that human being, right, based on your match rules. And it can be coming from different source systems. And you can think of it as basically an identity graph. Then connected to that, you can see that there are several different aspects of identity when you ingest data from Marketing Cloud that have been established. So you have your individual profile, you have your individual contact points, which could be for different channels. So you could have an SMS contact point, an email contact point, a mobile contact point. Um, and then what's new is here at the bottom here, you could see the affiliation, um, affiliation table. So basically, the affiliation table is putting a relationship between the individual profile, the unified profile, and the data from Marketing Cloud. So it's representing the relationship. And that can be a many-to-one relationship or a one-to-one -one relationship. So we'll talk about how you kind of enforce that in the process. This can be used in segmentation. So you can actually filter your segment for a specific business unit, or it can just be used during activation. So you can segment on the full identity graph, but when it's time to activate, only those uh, contacts that belong to that business unit will get activated. Um, how this data flows throughout the system. So we'll talk a little bit about setup here in a minute, but the data is really flowing from uh, Automation Studio. So if you have a data extension, all of our customers in Marketing Cloud, if you are one, are using data extensions. And either the data extension is, has a defined list of subscribers for a particular business unit, or you have a master list. And you have some sort of field or set of fields that defines how that particular subscriber relates to that business unit. That can be your source to drive this uh, very, um, very clear relationship between a business unit and a, uh, a contact or a subscriber. Some of you may or may not know this, but depending on the channel, you might already have a business unit uh, context, right? So for our mobile channels, we have a business unit context. For our email channels, we have a single all subscribers list for the enterprise. So uh, this allows you to really create a very specific and an explicit relationship, not just an implicit relationship based on fil filtering, but an explicit relationship that, which is then honored by CDP. Um, the mappings are only transferred once a day. So if there are a lot of changes to the way your business units and contacts are related, that whole end-to-end -end flow may take more than a day to flow through. Um, I think the standard activation time frame from CDP right now is 12 hours. So uh, the data would be transferred once a day to the business units, then it would be put into the affiliation DMO or table, and then it could be used in segmentation, which can occur on some other schedule. Once the, acti the way the activation actually honors the business unit separation is that each activation will place a new data extension table into a business unit specific folder called uh, CDP. So if you, for example, you have a segment and you're activating to a single business unit, it will create a folder in that business unit for CDP and it will have just the subscribers that belong to it. You need to create additional activation targets if you want that same segment to be activated to multiple business units. So you can still use the same segment, but you're gonna have different instances of that segment and different data in those instances. So how, how do you set this up? Um, so the first thing is you would turn on this capability uh, within uh, Marketing Cloud. You would grant business unit awareness permissions. There's unique permissions just for this function because it, it is maintaining a data separation. And then you would add a contact key and a BU mapping uh, to the business unit mapping activity in Automation Studio. So um, you can add a many to one, but that would be uh, multiple processes that you would have to run. So it's like really a one to one relationship. In CDP, you would enable business mapping ingestion. And remember how we talked about the data latency of the data moving over? So you wanna make sure when you enable this, you start in Marketing Cloud, make sure you have all your explicit mappings in place, and then once the data is available and visible in CDP and you see that affiliation being fully populated, then you can enable CDP to uh, honor that during activation. If you do it in a different order, what will happen is all your activations will have no members. 
right? Because they don't have any affiliation and, and the activation is automatically honoring that affiliation uh, with, with that enabled. You'll be able to create and update segments. You'll also be able to uh, set up different activation targets. And then when you create activations, um, there is a concept of source priority. So source priority is a concept in CDP activation configuration where it decides which source it will use as the primary source to deliver to the activation target. So for example, you can use a source as most engaged, which means regardless of the data source of the data ingested, whichever contact or whichever the subscriber was most engaged, that's the contact that's going to be activated to your destination target. Um, you can also choose Marketing Cloud, right? So we recommend that you use Choose Marketing Cloud, and that way you're ensuring that Marketing Cloud contacts are getting sent back into Marketing Cloud. They were originated from there, and they're getting sent back. Um, some of the different scenarios or use cases that we've seen, one is strict lineage. Uh, many of our customers want to make sure that one contact is only mapped to one business unit. Um, and they never want any sharing of data across their business lines or geographies, depending on what their business units mean to them. There are other customers who want to be able to share lineage in certain situations. So maybe they have two product lines, and sometimes they uh, cross market customers across their two product lines, and each of those product lines represent a business unit. The business unit mapping allows a many-to-one relationship. So that's just enforced by the mapping process. Um, the, if you have a master business unit, uh, if you have a master list of how your contacts should be split by geographies, and it's outside of Marketing Cloud, so it's just something that you maintain in a, another system, that can be ingested directly into CDP and mapped to that same affiliation DMO. So it doesn't have to be from Marketing Cloud, doesn't have to originate from there. We do offer automation there, but it's something you can map directly in CDP, use it in a similar way. Um, so that, that's something that you, uh, that you can do. In terms of roadmap, uh, today this process is, it is automated in a batch form. Um, we want to add the ability for the contact to be automatically mapped if it's processed by a journey. So a journey is always in the context of a business unit. If you inject a new contact into a journey in Marketing Cloud, it would automatically add that mapping. The mapping would automatically be sent to CDP and on activation automatically be honored. So that just basically makes it a no intervention kind of workflow for our customers, as long as you're using Journey Builder to inject um, your new contacts. We want to make sure that in both systems, you have the ability to, add to action on this relationship. So today, we have two places in the application. Uh, actually, we have the all contacts screen. Maybe you guys, some of you are familiar with it. And there's really no way to filter by business unit. It's been something we've been asked for for many years. And so this capability, uh, we'll be using this capability to allow that filter on that screen. So once that explicit mapping is there, um, it's, an, it's another feature that you can make available to, to your customers, uh, to your marketing team to allow them to basically only see the business units they have access to. So that screen will honor their rules and permissions on their business unit access based on the filter and the explicit mapping that you've entered. And then um, essentially today, when, uh, when you map something into contact and business unit mapping on Marketing Cloud, the contact has to be established. Uh, many of our customers don't establish contacts until they actually send a message. That's the point at which a contact is established. So we're adding, removing that up front to make mapping one of the places where you can establish a contact. So as soon as you map, that a contact will be established and it'll be instantiated in the system. Um, and that'll make it a, a really clean process and it will be available in all contacts. You can use the filter. It can uh, ensure activation happens with the right data separation. So I just want to thank you guys all for being here today. Um, if you have any questions, I'll stick around and you can ask me any questions. If this is an area that you're familiar with or if you're a new customer of CDP, be happy to answer any questions. So thanks a lot.